Hi everyone, Freedy here, here and welcome to today's latest Time for 2 loadout where I bring you new loadouts to play with every once a week. Today's loadout is going to be a slightly challenging yet basic support loadout. Nothing too fancy but something that will allow you to use a very underrated weapon and become a pest against both titans and grunts. Today's loadout we will be playing as the Grenadier from Time for Assault. This loadout, like I said, is nothing over the top or too challenging for many of you guys since the majority of you here have been playing since release. The only slight downside to this loadout is your main prime weapon, the SMR, which is a projectile based weapon which you need to lead your shots to land them accurately. But it's incredibly rewarding since it can kill pilots and grunts within a few shots, and can also act as an anti titan weaponry, so you don't need to switch out to another weapon except for maybe a pistol. Now for the loadout main focus and goal, you'll be following how the Time for Assault gonna do acts in terms of focusing on both infantry and pilots and clearing the way for your buddies to move on through. Think of it like a special ops, but more go loud when everything hits the fan. So for the layout, this is the following I decided to go with. Your class will be the female pulse blade pilot, or the female hollow pilot, as both have a similar design to the grenadier in Time for Assault, except for the helmets. Now if you don't want to go with these two, you can go with the grapple as well, but don't go with the stim or the phage or the cloak, because in terms of design, None of those three there look either identical to the Grenadier in Type of Assault. But for me personally, I chose to go with the female Pulse Blade as it allows me to maximise my usage for supporting other players while clearing pathways, and also allows me to understand the situation and whether or not I should advance or change my tactics. Plus, with the recent buff to the Pulse Blade class, it really will come in handy as in matches. Your primary will be the Signwinder or the SMR for short. This weapon is the main primary weapon used by the Good idea pilot in time for assault to take out both large groups of grunts and pilots at the same time. All this at the expense of you needing to lead your shots. It's not a bad weapon, but it's a weapon I advise you to play around with first before deciding to go head to head against other pilots, as you will be at a disadvantage if not. Your secondary weapon will be the P2016, since the game has a very small selection of secondary weapons now to choose from, so we have to make do with what we currently got sadly. Although, the P2016 isn't a bad weapon to use as it's very flexible for whatever playstyle you have, and can take out 4 health pilots within 4-5 to five shots at the least. Your anti-titan weaponry can be generally whatever you want, as SMR can act as both the primary and anti-titan weapon all in one. But if you want some advice from me, then go with the Thunderbolt, as it's good to use as a distraction weapon against titans, as while it damages them, you can switch out to your SMR, keep up the pressure against them. Generally, they'll run away and give you guys room to move up, hopefully. Or, depending on what type of player you're up against and what type of titan, they may start to focus entirely onto you, which could be in your favour or completely against you. Your ordnance could be either the gravity star to hold up players and guns in place and allow you to kill them easily, or the arc grenades to temporarily slow them down for a few seconds. Either one can help with ad control, but I would say go with the ordnance that fits the map more, like gravity star is good for smaller maps, while while arc grenades are good for medium to some larger maps. Your boost should be either dice roll to keep it unpredictable at all times for you, or map hack to constantly give feedback to your teammates in short burst. Your titan will be a customised ion with his titan perk being refraction lens that allows our split rifle to split into 5 ways which is useful in close to medium fights, but not so much for long distance fights. Now this is fine since we're going to use ion as a medium range titan rather than a long distance titan, and we're also going to pretty much ADS with a split rifle for the entire roll to maximise the perk. But you can hit fire as well. Just remember, these are little things I add to change up the playstyle for everyone, so we don't get bored with the same old gameplay while we try out diff something different. Also, add in counter ready or nuke jet for ion, since the playstyle plays very well with smaller maps. Just make sure you have a clear exit for your escape, as you don't want to go into like a small corridor that has no rooftops or such that allows you a nice area to jump out on and then you activate your nuke jet and you end up blowing yourself up and getting no kills. It's kind of embarrassing and sometimes you do wonder why am I even a pilot at times. Silly, it's silly the mistakes like these that you know keeps me playing sometimes. And lastly your pilot kit can be both power cell and titan hunter to really help out with team support. When it came to playing this loadout, I found myself supporting players a lot in PvP, through clearing out areas with grunts and generally staying in a group rather than going solo in many fights. This was mainly due to the class, boost and pilot kit I was playing with, that allowed me to constantly light up the minimap to always know where the enemies were located to. 
That, and also the fact that my main primary weapon isn't designed very well to take on other players who still play, unless I get the drop on them first. So in my case it was best to stay in a group, or as close to my teammate as much as possible, to survive many encounters. Like I said before, this loadout isn't so much unique compared to my Hollow Grenadier loadout for example, which was something different than what I usually do. But the loadout is challenging, as I want to make it interesting to use, and I do like adding twists to everything I do. So for starters, like I said before, your role is to stay in a group with your teammates, but to also clear a pathway for them so they can stop the enemy team from advancing, which is very similar to the Grenadier in Time for Assault if you've ever played the game, or if you've ever seen clips of the Grenadier in action. Since you don't have the health regen kit for your pilot, as I want to follow how Time for Assault did it with the Grenadier class, it means you need to pick your fights carefully, as taking on grunts are simple on your own, but taking on pilots and reapers that have a higher DPS range than you, then you know you'll be outmatched. So play hard, but play cautious, while using everything at your disposal. Also remember that the side one is great for ad control, and pilots, if you line your shots up right, it can make a whole difference in turn and tie of the match within your favour. Just be prepared when going up against both titans and pilots at once, as it will require you to stay on the move and in some cases leave your teammates behind, as staying in the group doesn't always work out well. But like I said before, please do play around with the Sidewinder because it is a very rewarding weapon to play with. I do enjoy it and I've made a load up before that was focusing ide ideally on just a pistol and Sidewinder role and it worked out really great, but it's a weapon that I would say is not really designed for taking on pilots and guns, it's more designed for taking on titans. But if you're skilled, or if you're someone that likes a good challenge every once in a while and you want to try something different out for once, the Sidewinder is one of those weapons that I would recommend that you go ahead and play with because like I said, it rewards you very well for your skill. And because the fact that it's a projectile weapon, projectile weapons in the game aren't the best in terms of netting you a bunch of kills, but if you can master them, that's where the money is. So when you feel like everything is working well and you've cleared out pathways and control certain areas with the help of your teammates, then now you can drop your custom ion down to which you'll be providing a lot more DPS damage in medium fights, as if you were playing a Scorch or Ronin. Ideally, you'll be ADSing for the role to maximise the refraction lens perk, to really pump up the damage, but like always as a catch. By you ADSing with the ion, you'll be using up your energy pool, which also helps out with your other abilities, so you will be severely limiting yourself down in combat. And it's also dangerous to go with this as well, considering that if you end up in big fights with other titans, there won't be a way for you to stop their incoming attacks, as no energy basically means you can't use your vortex shield, which is also good for stopping incoming attacks and basically dishing it back out to them. So if you're not prepared and you don't plan out your attacks properly, you can get destroyed quite easily. So you have two options. Either play it safe and wait for your teammates to drop their titans down first, and then drop yours down to get a bit of backup support. That way then you don't have to worry about getting overwhelmed and always fighting alone. Or secondly, drop yours first and do as much damage as you can, and then use your nuke jet if you have that titan kit. If you have that titan kit attached with you, and then activate it in the populated area to maximize the damage everywhere. As this way, you're getting a few points and moderately clear an area for your team to drop their titans in. But the whole general purpose of this loadout is try and support your teammates as best as possible. Ideally, you're going to be the person that's going to be leading the charge. You're going to be the person that's going to try to ideally clear out pathways so that your teammates can push on through and actually have a nice area to control so that when they have an area to set up and control the enemy team will be pushing to them and then your enemy team and your team will be generally prepared to clash it out. While they are both clashing out you can then basically sneak around, flank or either go ahead and push up with them at the front and take out as much grunts, reapers and pilots as much as possible. So then like, your teammates can then keep pushing and pushing and pushing to the point where the enemy can't actually push up no more. So generally, if you can try to get them to stay back in their spawn section, which is kind of scummy at first, but it does work, then you basically have an ongoing and an uncontrollable team to work with. And this can work out incredibly well for you. But, like I said at the same time, do be aware that you're using SMR, and you're not going to be the main hero of the whole match. The SMR is great, don't get me wrong, it's great for killing pilots within a few shots, and it's also great for destroying and 
killing reapers and grunts within a few shots as well. It's just the fact that because it's a projectile based weapon, you're not going to always land your shots. And also the fact that you don't have any other weaponry that will, you know, help you back up your shots if you miss your main primary weapon shots on the leading target. It can really limit you, limit you down. And if you're going up against a really skilled player that is maximizing the wall running, that's, that's basically sliding everywhere or is using grapple or stim or whatever to get the catch onto you, you literally will have no hope. And although you can adapt, many times you're going to be dying a lot. Unless you basically stick with your teammates and formulate a plan to allow you to actually control the area. So if you enjoy supporting your teammates and clearing the pathway to victory, but don't want a role that is too challenging, then I give you the good idea. I'm sure your team will appreciate her, and I'm sure that you'll have a lot of fun playing out with this not so common, basic, but very rewarding class and loadout. So that is the end of my video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then by all means leave a like, a comment and subscribe for more. If you didn't, then by all means leave a dislike, I'll understand and I know what to improve on in the near future, as I always make sure to go back over the video, make sure to read over the comments and genuinely look back at the video to see what I would need to improve on and what I might have done wrong. So once again guys, thank you for watching and I do hope to see you again soon.